Okay guys, this video is dedicated to anybody that's wanted to get into law school. So if you yourself have thought about going into law school or you know somebody else, like maybe you have a daughter or a son or a nephew or a niece that's in college and has mentioned, hey, I think I want to go to law school. Please have them watch this video. I wish I had something like this because if I did, I probably would not have gone. But thank you to Professor Timmer who in my orientation class recommended that we all watch The Paper Chase. Probably should have seen it before, but that's why I'm sharing it with you now. It's a movie that was filmed in the 1970s, but is still accurate and relevant. It's going to give a great representation to what your legal law school career is going to be like. So let's have a look at The Paper Chase, a small clip from it right now. Okay, so that professor was definitely more on the dickhead strict side, but that's what you're going to have in law school. You're going to have those professors, and you're going to have the ones that are more fun and entertaining. They're all trying to teach you the same thing, and they're all going to teach you the same way based on the Socratic method, right? They're going to stand you up in front of the entire class, and if you don't know the answer, they're going to keep firing questions at you. I remember one time I got stood up for like 45 minutes, and I just couldn't understand what he wanted, but finally I got led to the right answer by the right question, and that was that. So if, if you're uncomfortable and feel like you're going to get picked on, you take things personally, maybe that this law school is not for you because that is what you're going to be doing for your entire law career. In addition to all of the reading and the briefing, you're going to be briefing for the rest of your legal career, right? You're going to be writing down the facts of the case uh, in, in law school. You're going to be writing down what the judge decided, how they decided, what body of law decided, and most importantly, how and why the judge decided a certain way using what piece of law. So, um, some people are not going to be comfortable with the fact that you get stood up in a classroom full of your peers and it is dead silent. I mean, you will feel the sweat coming down from your face, the back of your neck getting hot, your palms getting sweaty. Uh, so if you're going to take it personally every time and that's not for you, then again, maybe law school is not for you. Okay, I got one last thing I want to talk about before getting into the LSAT. And this one last thing is one of these big things that I would probably not have gone to law school if I had known about it. And that is... You get one exam, you get one crack, you get one shot to show that professor that you know what you're talking about in one exam, all right? And some professors are gonna be a little bit lenient, okay? They're gonna give you an opportunity to get some points by having some true and false in there and some multiple choice. But a large majority of your professors are just gonna throw you between four and five fact patterns that you have to show and apply all the pieces of law that you've learned and show that you can explain them in writing. So if having just one exam bothers you, law school is definitely not for you. There's a law school out there for anybody, and it doesn't really matter how well you did in college or how well you do on the LSAT. You just can't be a total scrub, all right? So if you did an average job in college and you did an average score on your LSAT, good news is there's going to be a law school out there for you because there's like one to four tiers, all right? You may not be good enough to get into Harvard, uh, but you may slide in at one of those third and fourth um law school tiers. Now, let's say, for example, you did okay, like average in college, but you just murdered it on your LSAT, like you scored a 175. Even though you did okay, you know, in college, your LSAT scores are showing that you have a high likelihood that you're going to be a genius in law school. So maybe the top tiers would have a look at you. So if that's what you really want to do in your heart, don't feel bummed out that you didn't do like super good in college. Just study super hard for the LSAT and you're going to have a really good chance of getting into the school that you want. Now, the way I did it was I didn't have the money. I didn't have um, the resources to take prep classes because those can get pretty expensive. What I did was I just bought a lot of used study guides from eBay, and those are relatively cheap. And I studied an average of three to four days every day, uh, three to four days, three to four hours a day for about two to three months. Actually, it was like three months. Um, and it was good enough to give me a 148. So... Uh, if you don't feel comfortable studying by yourself, then I would definitely suggest taking a prep course. Uh, but it can be done. And you study guys are really cheap on eBay. You can find them all over the place. So the LSAT in itself is not that bad when you prepare for it. If I can get a 148, anybody can do really well on the LSAT. So my recommendation is get a lot of study guides. Never mind the prep classes if you're comfortable doing it. LSAT, not so bad. Okay. Let's say you're like, the heck with it. I don't care that I get one exam. I only need one to pass anyway. And you don't care that you're going to get stood up in front of a bunch of your classroom peers and get embarrassed. You got yourself a good study guide. You're in a good study group and you got yourself a good voice recorder. Great. Here are the three things that I think are necessary for you to do well in law school. And the first one is you absolutely must remember the piece of law that you're studying. Just like the guy in the front half who had a photographic memory, he would be a step ahead of everybody, right? He's got everything memorized. Without memorizing whatever law it is, con law, crim law, property, torts, contracts, whatever, you're not going to be able to do the second thing, which is apply the piece of law to a fact pattern, okay? So, for example, 
let's say you're trying to play Monopoly for the first time ever, okay? It's a complicated game for some people, and you can't remember the rules of how to play Monopoly, right? You don't know what to do when you land on somebody's property. You don't know what to do when you pass go. You're not going to do very well, right? Because you don't remember what the rules are to the game. You're not going to be able to apply them. Or maybe you kind of remember what the rules are. You're still not going to be 100% sure of how to apply those rules to the game. Uh, so again, number one, you have to remember accurately what's happening in that piece of law. And that's why it's critical that you get in a good study group because you have a really good outline. My best outlines have come because I was in a group uh, versus just trying to make an outline by myself. That's going to help you remember everything, especially because the first half of the semester, you're not going to remember what happened in the first half of the semester unless you have a really good outline. And once you got that stuff remembered, you can then transition into learning how to apply those to different fact patterns. And the last thing, of course, is it doesn't matter if you remember everything in the piece of law you're studying. It doesn't matter that you know how to apply those pieces of law to a fact pattern. If you can't get them down on a piece of paper to display, you know what you're talking about in, you know, in an exam. And that was my weakness is I'm not a very good writer. Now, you don't have to be a great writer. writer. You just have to be good enough to show the professor that you know what you're talking about. There's a lot of times after an exam, I would go and see the professor and he'd ask me about a certain thing that I saw and I read. And I would tell him, oh yeah, that's that. He's like, oh yeah, but you didn't put it on the exam. If you put it on an exam, you would have got an A. Um, so if you're not a really good writer or a strong writer or feel comfortable writing, I'd suggest strongly just getting that help before you get into law school. And then you'll do a lot better, a lot sooner than I had to kind of struggle through my years in law school, getting better as I went along. Well, guys, that's the ending of this video. I hope you found it useful. So if you know of anybody that wants to get into law school or if you yourself want to get into law school, I hope this helped out. Share it as much as possible. Please give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe by clicking that subscribe button down at the bottom. And don't forget to click that little bell on the side so you can get notifications to when I post a new video. And as always, I'll catch you guys later.